<laughs> Adjust it. Just bend this down. <laughs> Rafael, uh, what do you look at some of your priorities for this offseason? Um, I, I think our, our number one priority is just our current players getting better. Um, we feel really good about the group we have currently in place, and we think that they got better universally over the course of the year. And, um, and we, we need and expect that to really continue to, through the summer. And if that happens, I think we will have had a good summer. How much does the current flexibility you have impact the decisions you guys want to make this offseason in terms of building the roster? Um, I guess I don't, I don't understand what you mean by flexibility. Like just the draft you have, the future assets you have. Oh yeah, I mean we we're, we are going to be opportunistic um, this summer, this season, this coming season, um, next summer, so on and so forth. We we do think we're well positioned for the future, and um, and if 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 there becomes a deal, uh, if a deal becomes available that we think will make us better, we we do have a lot of assets, a lot of future assets and current ones. And, and we would be in a hunt for the deal. It takes two to tango, so uh, it does require that, that the other team like the package you put together. But, um, but we do think we can put together a lot of packages that should be pretty attractive. For this year, development was obviously the top priority. Do you view next year as the first goal becomes one loss record? Um, probably not. You know, um, I think that um, we actually have talked about that a lot this week, and I think I think you. It is hard um, if you are a great team. If you're, if you're, if you're, if your roster is in a championship level place, it makes a ton of sense to be like we need to win at least 55 games. And really want to win 60 because that's a great barometer for your ability to win a championship. Um, if you're not quite that team, and I don't, I don't think we're that team next year. Then I think it's much more about the process about about the improvement of the players, about uh, how you play each and every game. And, and then the record kind of plays itself out. Um, but I think you can make a mistake sometimes focusing on wins and losses, in part because if you lose a game, it can be the end of the world. And that, that's, that's, that should, for a young team, and we're definitely going to be a young team next year, it should not be the end of the world if you happen to lose a game. Um, so. so with 13 or 14 guys under contract right now, depending, you know, non-guaranteed, guaranteed, and then two draft picks. If there's not ma major additions of veterans, do you expect next year to be kind of like this year, about growth, young guys get better, and accept? No, uh, I, I, I do think, I do think, I don't think it'll be a, 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 like a complete rerun, no. Um, I, I do think it's, it's still about growth, it's about getting better. I mean, until you're a championship team, it should always be about getting better, right? And so I do think it's about getting better and about growing. Um, but I also think it's about, um, we know this group, we've had a, almost a full season with, with most of these guys. I, Dacian, we've not had a full season with, and Usman, we have not. Um, and I, I might be missing somebody else, but I don't think so. But with the rest of the guys, we've now had a full season. We have a good appreciation for who they are as players. If you look at the roster we brought to camp last year, we really had no idea what where the guys were going to fit. and so. That's, I think, the key difference is that because these guys, because we know who they are, we have real expectations about their improvement and where they're going to perform and everything else. With the group we had last year, it was more let's let's see, let's let's give them an opportunity, and and we had to let people play through all their mistakes. And it's not to say that people aren't going to have an opportunity to play through some mistakes next year, but I do think it will be more limited. And we just finished our exit meetings, and that was one of the things we communicated was. Um, you know, they're, they're, our expectations are going to grow. You guys grew. Our expectations are going to grow too. We shouldn't be making the same mistake more than once. And so, so I do think it's I do think it's different. How do you what feel, are, um, Steve, that never get through the season again? Yeah, I mean, I think look, this has been a difficult year, but I think Stephen did well. And in the macro, I do think all of our players uh, improved. And so, you know, that was that was our primary goal. And in that sense, I think I think he and his staff did a, did a very good job. I imagine you yourself on this is direct. I wouldn't. <laughs> you know, like I mean, like you don't know, you don't know what a draft class is going to be for five or six years. You don't draft anyone to for, to be a rookie, you know. And so I, I think um, uh, I don't want to pat myself on the back. I don't want to criticize myself for us organizationally. Um, you know, um, we're really excited about the guys. I thought they had a lot of talent when we drafted them. I still think they have a lot of talent, but 
but it is incumbent upon them to continue to really, really work to develop it, and us to insist on that work ethic and provide the resources so they can get better and better and better. Along those same lines, what is it like for you, who had a belief in these guys that you drafted, to see them kind of come into their own in this league a little bit throughout the season? What's that like for you? You know, it, it's not about me. I'm happy for them. You know, like, the, 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 it's a very, I mean, I've been in the league a long time. So, um, and I've been through enough highs and I'm old. <laughs> so like, you know, like for me, I'm happy for them that, you know, um, I've come to, I've, you know, you, you draft someone, you get to know them. Uh, we were lucky in that we drafted really, really a good group of people. I mean, they're obviously talented, but, the, but individually, these are good individuals. So mostly I'm just happy for them that, that, that they're enjoying success. And I'm proud of them in the sense that the things that um, we organizationally and Stevens in particular told them they need to work on, they worked on, and they saw the benefits of that. So that's that's a that's a good, healthy thing for for us and for them individually. Going off that, I know you feel pretty good about this last draft class. So for you, how excited are you knowing that you can add a premium talent at worst a top five pick um, this upcoming this upcoming draft? I mean, we may not like I said the same thing last year. We not we may not draft a single person. Like it's all we just got to see. We don't know where either of our picks are. We we don't know who's going to be in the draft even yet. So it's just it's just too early. Um, I do think we'll be a more talented team next year than we were this year. And I actually think just in terms of talent, we're a pretty talented team. We're just extraordinarily young. Um, chances are we'll be even younger next year, but but you never know. In Other terms than of, uh, you have the full mid level exception, but you don't have probably any of your own veterans to spend it on to keep. Do you envision using it or saving all that cap room for the next summer when you have the massive cap room? I, I think that that's going to depend entirely upon what's available at mid-level. We firmly were trying to spend mid-level this year and we used a little bit of it, but we didn't, we just didn't find, not for lack of trying, and we did, we had, we had talks with some people here domestically, some talks with people internationally, and it just, it just didn't happen. Um, um, and we found people we were really excited about, and we ended up finding other other ways of bringing them in. So, um, you know, um, the real answer is TBD. Like, it's just it's just too early to say what the market's going to be like. Have you, you all put together, together, you have, have you all put together a plan of what you're going to do with John yet? With John Wall? Yeah, we met with John. Um, we're like absolutely nothing's changed. So we're we're like I love John. Uh, I say that every time because I do. Um, uh, uh, he owes me a drink, but other than that, um, no. I mean, no, nothing's changed with John. Like we're going to work together, like we always had, and um, yeah, and and uh, and I'm very appreciative of him. Rafael, who would you label, if you would, one or two maybe of, of your surprises for this year, from the, from the current players? Like was it Alpi, Josh Christopher, or both? No, I mean we 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 brought these guys in because we were excited about them and we thought that they could do what they did. So, I, you know, I don't, I don't think we. No, I mean I'm 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 really happy with the people we brought in universally. That that I will say, but I, I it would be unfair to them to say I'm surprised because we obviously saw something. That's why we brought them in. Well, I don't mean surprised like you're shocked, but the guys that maybe did things you didn't expect them to do. You knew they were good, but they get better than you thought. That kind of thing. Or does, does that, that not work for you? Nah, <laughs> like I, yeah, like I have high expectations. So um, no, I, I I'm I, I I will say on the non-basketball front, Alperin's ability to adjust not knowing any English, I was super happy with, and he, he hit the ground running. I was surprised by that. Like, he literally didn't speak a word of English, and he communicated perfectly. That's that's definitely a talent. Um, but but no, on the court, I think I think those guys are who we hope they'd be. Other than Coach Turner. to uh, John Wall, do, are you at all confident that y'all have a resolution to a situation before next season begins? I don't, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know how to answer that. So I think, I think, my confidence. There's no resolution needed. So this situation's good. Like we're fine. So, so I, I think I think what I would say on John is we have a very good relationship. We're working towards a common goal. That has been what we've been doing this whole time, and we'll continue doing that. If Other than Coach Turner, it's materialized before training camp. Would you then entertain buyouts with him, or would you go a whole other year of him watching basketball? You know, I think there's a real market for John. I, th I think we'll I think we'll find a deal that will work for him and for us. And if one doesn't materialize, we'll we'll cross that bridge if and when it occurs. But that that is not something he's focused on. It's not something I'm focused on at this time. Other than Coach Turner, is the expectation for Stephen and the rest of his staff to all be back next year? 
I'm definitely the expectation is for Stephen to be back, and you know, as to staffing and everything else, that is uh, Stephen's choice. So, um, but um, but but yeah, like I, I definitely think that uh, that that you know I, you know Stephen Silas, who's about to follow me, is one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, he's an extraordinarily good man, extraordinarily smart man, and um, you know, and I'm looking forward to attacking this challenge with him yet again. Mr. Stone, it seems like you guys have a foundation in place with Jalen Efren and KP. Whether it's the draft free agency or whatever the case might be, how do you guys separate going adding players to the roster rather than be, you know, trying to separate from what you need versus best player might be available? I think generally it's really hard to make the NBA and there are plenty of people who were drafted in the number one, number two, number three. You pick a number, there's plenty of people who don't make it. And so um, I think our our job is to try and find people who can be successful in the NBA, uh, and that's much more about um, their talent level than it is fit. And so, um, you know, I, I think that it's very rare, if ever, that you should worry about fit when you're drafting a guy, because he might fit perfectly and then not be good enough to play. <laughs> and so that happens all the time. And so, yeah, we, we, we just worry about trying to find the best player who we think can ultimately have a really long and successful NBA career. And then, you know, um, I've said this before too, I think really good basketball players can play with other really good basketball players. And, uh, and um, yeah, that's my, that's my view. What does it mean to have so much fan support despite there being kind of a down season, developmental year, but just to see the outpouring of support from start to finish from the fans this season? Okay, I'm glad I waited on that question. I love our fans, they, they are, they are diehard and they are great, and I'm deeply appreciative of them. Um, uh, w one thing that's really cool: our situation is different from a lot of situations. We we have been we've been really really good for a long period of time, and um, and one nice thing I, I, I it's pure. I didn't know this was going to be the case. I hoped it would be, but I think has happened with our fan base is that is that people get it. They they understand what we're trying to do, and they're bought in. And, um, and, and when I get the opportunity to interact with our fans and they tell me that, that, that makes me feel great. Hopefully I've, I've helped that process a little bit by explaining it and not trying to, I'm not very good at hiding things. So, so I haven't really tried very hard. Like we're rebuilding and we're gonna be young and we're gonna be exciting. And winning even a single game is going to be hard for this past year. And it's gonna be hard for next year. Like um, winning in the NBA is hard. It's hard for every team. You can look at, look at Super Team X that, didn't have a good year. This happens all the time. Winning is very hard, um, uh, but um, but I do think we put together a, a very young, very exciting, very talented group. And um, and if that group continues to develop, and if I do my job right, and Stephen does his job right, it should be a really really fun ride up. And um, I do think it's more fun as a fan. This is speaking from personal experience to be there at the beginning than the end. And so uh, so I I just greatly appreciate all the fans who've decided to like really buy into it and ride the journey with us it's 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 been in that sense it's been super rewarding for me on you know when i when i get when i have that random interaction it's been really cool How what do you was be... super team x that didn't have a very good year that you had in mind i, I did not have one of mine <laughs> uh, thank, thank you guys you.